e-commerce essentially at the end of the day is when you buy a product or a service online. So as simple as that. What percentage of retail is done online in your opinion? 80. 80. Anybody else? 10. 6. <laughs> Less than 6%. The reason that's very important is it has nowhere to go but up. The categories have now become very well defined. You have consumables, so um, anything that you actually use and throw away or consume or whatever the case may be. Obviously products, uh, services, and we'll get to, and Uber is one of them. Uh, rentals, which is a very, very big one. And uh, entertainment should actually should say content. Monetization mechanism. Not every dollar is worth the same. If I have a company that is doing $100 in Amazon, and I have another company that's doing $100 with Netflix. Which one is worth more? The, the one on Amazon has a margin above this thing, and it's a one-time. The one on Netflix has a margin that is significantly larger, and it's a recurring revenue base. So in order is Amazon's and eBay's of the world, which are typically one-time transactions, although Amazon recently changed it, so they have repeat purchases for the items that are consumables. The flash sale ones are when you go and they have, there's a sale for the 24 hours. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. They're much higher margin but the short duration, and the CAC in those is very high, the subscription model, of course, and this is where the market is moving towards, curated commerce. I think the biggest trend is going to be this intermediation, and it refers to the removal of the agency or the middleman between the product or the service and the user. If you want to drive a taxi in New York, you need to buy a medallion for the taxi. That medallion costs a million dollars. Uber is a company that allows you to a mobile app on your phone, to press a button, location-based, a car picks you up wherever you are and takes you where you want to go. Private drivers, they are dressed extremely well, they have very nice cars, and they are all on GPS. You choose the type of the car you want, and it shows up within three to 10 minutes, takes you where you want to go, and it costs 40% less than a cash. In France, the taxi drivers are attacking Uber drivers, and the police stand there and watch. The fact that governments are after Uber and Airbnb tells me they're doing something right. This is the future. CAC. Customer acquisition cost is the single most important factor in any business, in particular in online business, because we have the ability to calculate it very big. Whenever someone is presenting to us for either a fundraiser or reselling a company, I always say, what's your CAC? If they look at me like this, I literally get on leave. If they cannot tell me precisely what their CACs are, they have no clue what they're doing. To lose the customers I've acquired online, because the cost of acquiring a new customer exceeds the cost of retaining an existing client online by a wide margin. Uh, for example, Uber, the CAC is very low, <coughs> but it's very viral. So the idea is to bring your CAC down as much as E-commerce, you have revenues on one end, you have costs on the other end. How do we calculate revenue and what are revenue parameters that are the most important? First of all, you decide what's your addressable target, right? And within that, you decide what is the specific demographics you're going to, demo, demographics you're going to go after. Number one is what is the gross margin per transaction? <coughs> And there are two numbers. One is the percentage of that gross margin, and one is the absolute dollar. The reason those numbers are important is because for every revenue line, you have a cost line. And there's a term that's called lifetime value of a customer. The gross margin dollar and the customer acquisition costs are the two key parameters here. So the absolute margin dollars has to exceed the CAC dollar. Social commerce. So. Um, Social commerce, the term actually started a few years ago again in Los Angeles with some of the companies that were very, very up with Facebook and Twitter. So the way the shoe companies did it, there was like Just Fab and Beach Bean and all those guys. They would get celebrities to tweet and go on Facebook and all of that to drive traffic. Now it's come to a point where we can measure the basket size based on where your social engagement is. By far the biggest is Facebook. It's the biggest driver of social commerce. But the basket size is bigger. But the Pinterest is the most active one. So people love to pin everything. Mobile is now the fastest growing portion of e-commerce. And the rate of growth of mobile is far higher than any other segment in commerce, whether it's online, retail, anything else. It's by far higher. 
um, within mobile, iPhone is by far the leader. Uh, and the trends are significant there. So, by 2018, it's going to be almost half of all times. I'll give you an example. Last year, uh, for the first time ever, more adult diapers were sold than children. Yeah, Most sense. adults, out of whatever reason, embarrassed over the case, are not willing to pick up that giant thing of adult diapers and walk on it. <laughs> so stores are allowing you to scan it while you're there with your phone, and it'll ship it to your house. So the, the, the job of the store is becoming very different. It's not fulfillment, it is service. We're finding that our customers, large retailers and so on, uh, are asking or offering consumers different ways of buying products. So, you know, the traditional supermarket will still be predominant for a large section, but increasingly we're seeing e-commerce and groceries online as a, as, a, as a large trend in all sorts of product areas. We're, um, in our case, we are actually selling to the Far East at the moment, and we find the Chinese consumer is particularly keen on buying even grocery products, large grocery products, online. Uh, well, social media is hugely important to me um, because we've got so many different people involved with the site and so many people selling different things. Um, I'm very, very keen for everyone to promote their business in their own way and I'll be able to be a sort of funnel for all of that. So say someone's launching a new necklace, then they can tell their customers about it, but I'll also tell mine and you might not even know you want a new necklace. You know, you might be sort of looking for a cushion or something and you'll be able to see that product out there. And I think lots of people will be able to see only what they're interested in in that way. I think that's very important for people to be able to, if they like a particular page, well then they know if there's a new product launch, they will want to go and see what they're offering. What we've seen in um, mobile e-commerce um, for our, our customers, um, they're using it more as a browsing experience. They're able to actually sit at home on the couch, browse through the various products um, that are available. Um, that's where we're very keen to um, develop our mobile offering to the customers, um, mainly looking at the browsing experience and also uh, providing geolocated um, offerings to the customers. For us, social media is primarily about connecting with our customers and keeping that relationship going even when they're not in the store with us. We see a much better result with local customers than we do with online customers who respond a lot better to email marketing. In our portfolio, we actually have 24 e-commerce companies, so there's two ways for startups to look at it. Either you take a concept that you know is successful somewhere else, and you copy it in your geography, in a different geography, or uh, you come up with a new concept that has not been applied yet. And examples of that would be if there is a subscription models in certain areas, is there a new subscription model that you can come up with that is financially viable? Or uh, is there another company that would be a derivative of existing companies that are around you that you could do? So in other words, you need to ensure that it's a viable model, that your customer acquisition costs are less than the gross margin that you generate and the lifetime value of that customer, the basic, basic standards of e-commerce. I think that that is one of the biggest things we're going to experience in e-commerce in the coming years in that the relationship with the, between the customer and the provider of that product and service is going to be more one to one. It allows for a more curated, personalized commerce experience. It allows for a significantly reduced costs and it allows for a better experience for the customer as well as the provider in every shape and form.